Good afternoon, everybody. Mr. Andrews here. It's Friday, the 15th of May, and this will be our stream for our sixth grade social study. So I hope we get some of you guys to join us here in the next hour or so, so we can look over the next assignment in our blizzard bag. Um, but, you know, generally how this thing works is that we'll give it like 10 minutes or so, so some students and um, other members can like uh, trickle in and stuff. But I hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's staying safe. And you know, it's it's Friday, so that's a good thing. That's a positive to think about. And you know, we're getting pretty close to this month being over already, which is kind of insane. It seems like we just started uh, the month of May, but we're already halfway through. But I do see a couple of us that are just joined. So Dimitri and David, uh, good to see you, gentlemen. Here, hope you two are doing well. So let me get you guys down for uh, attending here. It's always appreciated, and you guys are always some regulars, so it's always nice to see. I hope you guys are having a good week so far. I hope you guys are staying safe and keeping yourselves occupied while at home and everything like that. But, you know, like we've done other streams. Um, We'll kind of give it a little bit, a few minutes here, so we can hopefully have some more people uh, join us, because I know generally we have, like, Lucas is a pretty regular uh, on here. Um, Dakota, for the most part, is as well. So we'll give some students that are maybe just waking up or finishing doing other things, uh, whatever those things may be. But, again, good to see you gentlemen here, so... You guys doing anything exciting this weekend have any plans i mean it's supposed to be warming up but i think it's supposed to be kind of rainy and like storming a lot this weekend i know i think we are um tomorrow our plan is to uh meet some friends in mansfield because you know we live in akron they live in Columbus. Mansfield is about halfway. Um, we're going to do some swapping of clothes. They have a set of twins that are a little bit older than you know our set, set of twins, so we often exchange clothes and stuff like that. Um, obviously, we're going to just kind of not really talk or hang out and you know interact or anything like that. We're just going to really swap the clothes. Um, but definitely, you know, definitely beats having to buy more and more clothes for these crazy kids who always seem to be growing and growing and growing and grown out of clothes. So that's our big exciting plan for uh, this weekend. But like I said, hopefully you guys have something um, more exciting than that. You know, like I've told the uh, students on the other streams here on like the seventh and eighth grade, but you know, I'm bummed that obviously we can't be in the building and stuff like that because you know this last month of school normally is a lot of fun, a lot of days out of the school or out of the building, whether it's um, field trips or kind of other fun activities we have planned. Hey, look at this! Thank you for joining us, bud. Um, you know, the last really month of the school year at Summit is a lot of fun. Um, not just for eighth grade, you know, because it's our last year and everything, but, you know, for seventh and sixth graders too, we do a lot of fun things. So one of the many things I wish we could be doing, but, you know, given the world or given the situation, we can't obviously do that. But hopefully by next school year or you know, August, things are shaping up a little bit better and we could be back in the building and kind of go back to the way things were in some respects. I, I, Got a feeling that some things are definitely going to be changed permanently or just the way we do things are going to be forever changed. Um, but yeah, definitely anxious to get back in the building and to see you guys. Uh, went in, I think, was it last week? I think, it, no, maybe two weeks ago by now. I can't keep these days straight. Went in to go pick up the first round of Blizzard bags and it was eerie kind of walking into the school. It was just so quiet, so empty. Um, it was like going into a kind of living museum where kind of things are just, for the most part, left exactly how they were. 
you know, the, the two months ago that we were last in there, some coats are still hanging on the racks and stuff and some random book bags here and there. And going back into my classroom or to the classroom, it was strange seeing how um, those things were just kind of still the way that I left them. And I don't know, it's just kind of a weird sensation. You see those pictures of like uh, Chernobyl or other places that are kind of like frozen in time. And that's almost what it felt like. Obviously not like a nuclear explosion kind of thing, but you know, just a weird kind of sensation. Sorry if I seem preoccupied. I'm cleaning one of my notebooks, one of my erasable notebooks, um, you know, that Miss Vaughn and myself kind of nerd out about. Generally, where I do a lot of notes and normally take attendance and stuff in there and get some important stuff down. And it's been a while since I've kind of um, had opportunity to look through it and get it clean. You know, but if you guys don't already, um, make sure you do have your newest Blizzard bag. I don't know why I keep calling it new. You guys have had it for weeks now. Um, but make sure you have that handy. I'm sure you guys are all prepared and you know, ready, get ready students. So uh, we'll get started here in just uh, another minute or two. We'll, we'll start about like 10 after. Uh, but if you want to get it to the page, we're going to be taking a look at assignment seven from your Blizzard bag. Um, that one is called the Great State. Um, and my plan is to hopefully post a, another video to go over assignment eight, um, maybe this weekend or Maybe, maybe I'll make it this weekend and have it uploaded on like Monday or Tuesday um, before I go back on, you know, on next Wednesday. Um, and what I try to do when we make those separate, you're done with the back and nice. So come in here just to hang out or just to kind of double check work. That's always good, David. Um, and I try to keep those other videos, the ones that aren't live, a little bit shorter, about 20 minutes, a half hour or so. You're not listening to me for a full hour like some of you guys do hanging out here. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you don't already have the packet or have the assignment ready, we're going to be taking a look at the great state. I'll, I'll do the reading, kind of the read aloud thing. Again, that helps a lot of students. You know, if that's not your thing, obviously you can go ahead and kind of move at your own pace. If you have questions, put them in the chat. Myself or other students can definitely help. We can all help each other out. Um, the activities are, I think, pretty easy on this one. Um, there's not as many activities. There's three, I think, A, B, and C. Um, a lot of vocab in here and kind of like true false kind of thing. Um, and then the separate one where it's having you think about um, different professions and how that and how like state governments kind of affect that. But it all you know makes sense uh, when we get started with the assignment. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and pull mine up on my computer. I don't have the physical version of it. I got my teacher copy, um, but I don't have the one that you guys as I'm dropping uh, mice and stuff in my room here. Um, I have obviously the, my teacher version, but I don't have the student one, uh, for some of the other assignments I do. So if you see me looking off to the side or if I'm look, looks like I'm looking off into space, I am reading it from another tab or another window on my computer. So I'm going to get mine ready again. This is going to be assignment seven, the great state. So, so again, please have yours ready. If you don't already, have it or if you do and you got it done already like david and i'm sure some of us some others have it done as well that's a good opportunity for you to go back and double check your work um you know but just to quickly recap what we've looked at already you know the very beginning of this packet we were finishing up checks and balances or kind of ending or concluding our look at our system of government you know the first packet was really trying to dig deep into the three different branches of government, what their roles and responsibilities are, who is uh, involved or who are the members of each branch and things like that. Then we got a little into the, the philosophy where people uh, during this time period called the enlightenment really started to kind of call to question the reason for and the kind of origins of why does government exist or what is the purpose of government? Who should it serve and who should have an active role? in government, should it be just for the powerful or should it be for everybody? Should it be for the citizens? And we saw some very differing um, opinions on that, whether it was Thomas Hobbes, who thought, you know, people are kind of naturally wicked, prone to violence, they need to be ruled by a strong monarch, like a king, or maybe some of us align more with John Locke, 
Uh, because then, you know, the reason for government is to help protect their rights. You know, everybody's born with uh, their natural rights, life, liberty, and property, and government exists to protect those rights. Um, and there's this idea of a social contract and popular sovereignty, you know, this idea that there's an understanding or there's some sort of connection or this contract between the citizens and the government. And, you know, according to Locke, if the people feel that the government is not holding up their end of the bargain, um, the people have a right to kind of change, overthrow, abolish, get rid of the government. And we saw, and I gave the example of what the founding fathers did and what the American colonies did during, uh, or what became the American Revolution. You know, then we took a closer look into ancient Athens, kind of looking at the first real example of democracy and what we considered like civilization, quote unquote, for a lot of human history as, you know, these sixth graders, we we're looking at ancient, you know, the Sumerians and Mesopotamia, the ancient Egyptians are just about to get into, you know, ancient India a little bit more in depth and um, ancient China. These were mostly ruled by either kings or emperors or kind of one dynasty, one ruling family. And that's how it was for er a lot of early human history. Um, that really begins to change when we kind of get to the ancient Greeks and the Romans who really start kind of running with this idea of democracy, having people decide and people directly involved in the voting process. Now, whether that meant everybody was voting or everybody had a say, or if you think back to that a dive into democracy, um, it was only a small percentage of people were actually able to practice this right to vote and stuff like that. Um, and all that kind of brings us up to bringing it back a little bit more kind of personal, I guess, or a little bit more tangible for us here living in 2020 in Akron or roughly in Northeast Ohio and the state of Ohio. And we're going to see how these kind of state governments run and how these state governments operate. So maybe you've been thinking about this if you're looking ahead. Hey, Kennedy, good to see you here, dear. Um, we're just about to get started on the uh, reading for assignment seven, okay, from the Blizzard bag. That's called The Great State. I was just doing a quick little overview of stuff we kind of, or the assignments we looked at already. Um, and I was just about to start the reading of The Great State. So if you have your Blizzard bag, you know, that'd be great if you had it to follow along. You, know, you guys can always ask questions, like I said, in the chat, if they come up at all. Um, or if you, I can help you out or your classmates can help you guys out. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask. No big problem. Or if you, you know, think a little bit differently about something or you want to put your opinion on something I say or something from the reading, maybe sounds weird or sounds interesting, definitely leave comments in there. Then we can you know, t talk about it and discuss it for a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look at the great state. So state government, sound familiar? So state governments work almost exactly like the federal government. And when they say federal government, that means the national government, uh, the government in Washington, DC. So there are three branches of government, an executive branch, a legislative branch, and a judicial branch. At the state level, the head of the executive branch is called the governor. Uh, probably in the last couple of months, you guys are hearing about the governor a lot, maybe just about every day or every couple times a week. Um, so, you know, one of the branches in the state government is the executive branch. Kind of the person in charge of the executive branch for a state is a governor. It's almost like a president of the state in some respects. Our governor in Ohio is Mike DeWine. So if you've been hearing the name Mike DeWine or just DeWine a lot lately during all the press conferences and the um, things going on to kind of inform the state about what's going on in our in the state's fight to you know combat this uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, that's probably maybe you've heard the governor um, talk a lot. All right. So back to the reading here. Every state except one uh, also has a bicameral legislature meaning that the legislature is made up of two chambers. Okay, bicameral means two parts, two um, chambers in the legislative branch, so like a House and a Senate. Okay. So in most states, those chambers are called the Senate and the House of Representatives. A state's judicial branch normally includes a high court, often called the Supreme Court, and a system of lower courts. And these lower courts include trial courts and appeals courts, 
And there's a nice diagram on the bottom of this page that kind of breaks that down a little bit better. Um, gives, us, gives us a nice visual. Okay. All right, so a state's three branches interact just like the three branches at the federal level. The purpose of having three branches is to balance power so that not one branch or person becomes too powerful. And it's all about this idea of checks and balances or this balance of power. The state's a legislature passes laws and a state's governor can veto or reject laws that are passed and a state's high court has the power to decide what state laws violate the state's constitution. Now they're gonna get into how state each state, all 50 states have their own constitutions uh, just like there is a constitution for the federal government or for the country as a whole. And if you look at the little sidebar in the little notepad, um, you can kind of see that one kind of unique case. You know, it talks about how 49 of the states have a bicameral or two-part legislature. Nebraska is the only state whose legislature has one chamber, not two. So it'd be a unicameral. Okay? So instead of having a Senate and a House of Representatives, Nebraska's legislature has one group of representatives that does all the lawmaking. So again, it's really up to each state how they want to decide how uh, their legislative branch is run. If we're in Nebraska, when you know, they you know, gain statehood and stuff, they decided, well, let's just have one, okay, instead of having two of these different parts. And that's really what makes the United States uh, unique compared to most other countries is this federal system of government where there is a government at the national level, okay, think Washington, D.C., think Congress, President, Supreme Court, stuff like that. But then there's also the state governments, okay, with your state governors, your, your state legislative branch, and your state courts or your state Supreme Court. So it may get all kind of confusing, and there may seem to be a lot of overlap there, but, you know, the states really kind of do run independently of the, you know, big federal or big national government. And, you know, with everything going on, you're kind of seeing how each state is approaching uh, this pandemic a little bit differently. You have some states that are kind of opening up maybe businesses, opening up their economy a little bit quicker compared to other states. You know, Ohio's in this process of well deciding what businesses are able to open uh, little by little. That way people get back to work and people can, you know, again, start making money and help kind of keep the economy going so people aren't, you know, forced to um, look for like a second, third or fourth job or anything like that. Or so people don't have to worry about food. You know, um, you know this is a really unique time, um, but it also is giving us a nice example of our federal system at work and kind of seeing how each state is able to do things a little bit differently. But we're also kind of seeing maybe some of the drawbacks of this system as well as that maybe some states don't have enough resources or enough equipment to kind of deal or to combat, uh, to handle some of the situations that they're in. So what they're gonna get into, I think it's on the second page, is that when states don't have enough, then that's one of the benefits of our system is that they can ask the federal government for some help, whether it's financially or in other, or in other ways. But let's go, let's go back to the reading and dig a little bit deeper into each branch uh, just a little bit. So we're about halfway down where it says the state legislative branch. Okay. So the state legislative branch. The state legislature is the state's lawmaking body. The state's legislators, okay, so what, we're going to be seeing legislature and legislators a lot. Sounds very similar, spelled differently. When it ends in T-O-R-S, that's talking about the, the individual people or the, um, the person. So the legislature is a person in the legislature. The legislature is the state's lawmaking body. So I know it's kind of confusing, but looking at how they're spelled, that's kind of how we help identify uh, the difference there. Um, but each state is divided into legislative districts that contain roughly the same number of citizens. Citizens in each district elect representatives to serve in the state legislature. That means that the state legislatures represent the citizens who live in their district. This way, the interests of people in different parts of the state can be represented when state laws are being considered. And this is something you can actually check, you know, if you just pull up a new tab or something, or if when this is done, you just Google like, what district do I live in? I did this yesterday on the seventh grade. Um, and I think it should be like the first, um, link there, the first hit should be like, you know, House of Representatives or 
I should say finder district. It's going to ask maybe for your uh, zip code and it sh will show you um, your potential representatives for each state. And it should also show you like the name of your district okay, in Ohio, because even though we may live in Akron, there could be several different districts in Akron as a whole. But, you know, they talk about how the different legislatures represent the citizens of the district. And again, that's a, um, it's one of these things that makes us different is this form of represent or form of representative democracy. It's not a direct democracy like in ancient Athens where people had, you finished the packet too, Kennedy? Nice. So hopefully we can, you know, this is a nice opportunity for you to like double check the work or ask questions if you have any or to help some students out and that maybe don't have it finished. Um, but this form of rep representative democracy is different than the direct democracy that we saw in ancient Athens where the citizens or whoever qualified to be a citizen, you know, was an active member of the government. So it's not like me, you know, your parents, grandparents, aunt, uncle, whoever are actively going to um, the legislature and making and discussing laws. We're picking other people to speak on our behalf or maybe <laughs> your uh, family member is a legislator and that's be pretty cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and Makes life sound like the Hunger Games <laughs> a little bit, yeah, um, with diff with the different districts. Um, but yeah, that's something you could definitely check out is like kind of what district do I live in? Uh, I forget the really interesting topic because you can kind of dig deep into this whole discussion or this whole topic of districts um, because there's a lot of controversy around it because of how the districts are uh, made. They're not cut like perfect squares or anything like that, or no, district one is a circle, district two is a circle over here, or, you know, like I said, they're not perfect. They're very weirdly drawn, and there's a lot of, like I said, controversy into who gets to actually make these districts. Um, they are very, it's a, it's a very long and complicated and detailed kind of topic um, that, you know, we could really get into if we were in the classroom, we could have discussions and stuff like this and kind of dig a little deeper into it. And it kind of goes back to this whole process called gerrymandering, which is again, a whole separate thing on its own. But you know, this, well, that's kind of how our state system works is on these districts um, and then representatives from these districts, you know, hopefully represent the concerns, the views of different citizens who live in the state. So that's why, you know, people who maybe live in more rural or farm uh, kind of territories have different uh, needs or have different concerns than people who may live in more urban or a more kind of city environment. All right, so let's take a look at the state executive branch here then. So the state executive branch, the head of a state's executive branch is the state governor. The governor is like the quote unquote president of a state and has similar powers such as the power to veto bills, again, meaning to like reject bills passed by the state's legislature. A state's executive branch also includes many departments. And so just like the federal or national executive branch. So states usually have their own depart departments of education. So there's the Ohio Department of Education, uh, transportation, health, and other services. These departments carry out the laws passed by the state's legislature. Again, the laws are made by the legislatures and enforced by the executive branch. So I'm probably hearing a lot about the Ohio Department of Health uh, a, a lot as well with, again, um, over the last two months with everything going on around COVID-19. So, you know, that's obviously one we're going to be seeing in the news for a long time. Um, the Ohio Department of Education, ODE, um, obviously influential into your guys' lives, into our lives, because, you know, they're the ones who kind of make the rules and the standards and everything that we need to make sure you guys are getting and getting the type of education and the state says that Ohio students need. And if you take a look at the picture to the right, you know, governors from each state belong to the National Governors Association they meet twice a year to discuss issues that affect all states. So twice a year, you know, I'm not exactly sure when these meetings take place, but I'm, if one has happened already, I'm definitely sure they would have talked about the COVID-19 pandemic at one of those meetings. You know, and another thing, if you haven't paid attention or noticed that some of the words are bold, those are going to be your vocab or key terms. Um, and those are going to be helpful in one of the activities that follows the reading. So maybe what you can do if you're reading this or following, following along, whenever you see one of those 
bold words, highlight it, circle it, underline it, do something. Um, that way you can come back to it because it there is an activity that sort that centers around uh, the vocab. Okay. okay, so let's take a look at the state judicial branch. So at the state level, like the federal level, court or cases start in a trial court. In many states, the trial court level is called the superior court. States also have appeals courts where people can fight a trial court's rulings. And of course, every state has a high court. A state's high court reviews the decisions made by lower courts, supervises the other courts, and interprets the state constitution as it applies to the law. State judicial branches also include a level of courts below the trial courts. These courts handle the thousands of smaller issues that come up every day, such as traffic tickets and minor crimes called misdemeanors. Okay. Well, yeah, as Michi points out, Kennedy, this is the last blizzard bag. This, you know, it will should last you or was meant to last you for another couple of weeks. But if you got it all done, that's great. More power to you. Um, I don't know of uh, the official turn in date. That would be a question for uh, Miss Yingling. But, you know, the school year is coming to a close here pretty soon. Um, I think like the 29th, 30th or some some date like that. But, yeah, if you got this one done, you know, it's more time for you to work on the other ones. Or if you got all them done, that's great. You can kick back, relax a little bit. To go back to the work, though, and double, definitely double check if you haven't done that already. Just to make sure everything is as good as it can be. Uh, but, yeah, no more social studies packets from me, at least. Okay. So that was page one of the reading. Um, so we ended page one on the state judicial branch. Again, that diagram to the left of it is a nice kind of breakdown. So there's the state Supreme Court at the very top. Then beneath that, we have appeals courts and then your superior uh, superior courts and at the very bottom level. These are your kind of municipal or city uh, courts. So I think if I remember correctly, uh, on like walks to Haven of Rest, when that was a thing, um, we would have passed you know a city or municipal court. Um, if, again, if I may be misremembering, it's been a couple of years since I've done the Haven arrest thing. All right, so page two. Page two. Give me a second so I can get something to drink here. So page two. Okay. So the state legislature is a state's lawmaking body, but in all states, the law of the land is the state constitution. So again, so just like the U.S. Constitution, a state's constitution describes how the state's government must operate. It's like the rule book, what a state can and cannot do. It may also include other laws, such as requiring a free education for state citizens. But in addition to the state constitution and the state legislative branch, there are usually other ways that laws can be made in a state. In many states, the initiative process allows citizens to draft laws they would like to see adopted. If citizens collect enough signatures, the law will be placed on the ballot for state citizens to vote on. And so this may be something you have heard about or maybe seen depicted in a cartoons even or movies, TV shows, whatever. So the initiative process. So that's how another way you know citizens can take a active role in kind of the government is that they can, if enough people agree that one thing, sh uh, this law should be made, whatever, it, excuse me, may be. They can collect get enough or collect enough signatures and then it can be voted on whenever the next election is. Now there's also the referendum process. So it works the way uh, works the same way, but is used to let citizens vote on a law already passed by the state legislature. Okay, so um, if there is already a law in place that was made by the people in the in the legislature, they can get enough citizens or enough signatures from citizens. And maybe take and um, remove a law if they don't agree with it. So, however, a state law is adopted, the law only applies inside that state. So, again, that is the unique thing here in the United States with each state having its own kind of government. Um, you're going to have different laws in different states. So, whatever laws California has aren't going to necessarily aren't going to apply for citizens in Ohio, and the same thing. The laws that are made for this in the state of Ohio apply to citizens in that state. They don't work for citizens in Florida or for in New York or any other state. <laughs> uh, Kennedy's relief that this is the last one. 
Amanda Kennedy, you've been a trooper, so just hang in there. Like I said, there's only a few few more weeks left and and maybe some more time to work on some of the other work or if you're all done with everything, take it easy and relax. Okay, sorry. I had a sore neck and I had to get that taken care of. All right, so we are about to start services, services. This is the second uh, section of page two. So state governments provide many services to state citizens. These include things like police, fire safety, child protective services, roads, schools, and parks. One of the biggest services is maintaining the state's infrastructure, which are the basic support structures that serve a geographic area, such as transportation, again, think roads or whatever, maybe it's uh, city busing and stuff like that, communication, think power lines, phone lines, uh, power systems. So all of these services cost money and are generally paid for with taxes collected from citizens. Usually, however, the states cannot afford to provide all the services citizens need. Very often, states look to the federal government for help. The federal government gives money in the form of grants, which are sums of money designated for a certain purpose, such as improving an airport or providing health care to low-income households. Again, some keywords in there, some vocab words, so highlight those, circle them, underline them, do whatever you need to do. Put a star next to them, that way you know they call out to you, that way you notice them. So again, if a state does not have enough money or um, to provide services, what they can do, state governments can ask the federal government for help, okay? And if you know, there is an agreement, if the, their pleas for help get heard and met, you know they, the states will receive money in grants but the money that they get from those grants have to go specifically to whatever that service is because everything there, there's a receipt for everything. All right. I'm almost done with everything. I just got one more packet left and that was math. Ugh. Yeah, math. I wish I could help you with math, but my math is definitely not my strong suit. <laughs> For me personally, it seemed like math was kind of pointless beyond geometry, but that was just me. All right, so we got just about two shorter sections left here. So we're on regulations equal rules. Okay, so state governments also protect citizens by regulating or making rules about many activities. So doctors, dentists, accountants, builders, barbers, and many other professionals must be certified by state agencies. State and local governments enforce building codes that specify exactly how buildings must be constructed. And you can't just have any random person design a building because they need to be certified. They need to have the proper education. Uh, they need to really know what they're doing. They need to have an understanding and the knowledge of uh, you know, what materials are best for the job. Um, support and stuff like that. And then again, that's just an example for like engineers, but the same for doctors, dentists, your teachers is another one. But, you know, you have to be certified by the state that you live in to be a teacher, to be a doctor, to be a dentist, whatever it may be. So they conduct food safety inspections at restaurants, check to make sure gasoline pumps are accurate, and administer tests to uh, people seeking a driver's license. Again, these are all things uh, that the state does. So the state agencies that carry out these regulations are almost always part of each state's executive branch. Okay, again, the executive branch, that's one that enforces or executes the laws, the ones that carry it out to make sure that these laws are getting done. Is there one for sleep, a sleep packet? Is that what you're saying? You probably do very well on that sleep packet, Kennedy. Um, you know, they do give an interesting example there of um, checking gasoline pumps. Um, if, you know, whenever you are out and about with mom, dad, or whomever, um, and you notice that the pump there should, at every pump, there should be like a little sticker and it's normally white or yellow, I think. Um, and it'll have some like big letters or like some big words in the middle. Then like around the outside, around the perimeter or border, there should be the, the 12 months. There should be a little mark or a little check or a little dot. Uh, showing when was the last time that gasoline pump was checked to make sure it's good or to make sure it's accurate. Um, again, that's something that each state does. So maybe pay attention uh, for a little sticker. It's about that big, maybe it's a little bit bigger than like a deck of cards or your phone or something. It's normally under like where it says the price and the gallons and stuff like that. But you can kind of see when was the last time 
that that gas pump was checked. All right. Um, so last little bit of reading here, the local governments, okay? Right next to the puppy over there. So local governments. Local governments, such as cities and counties, get their power from the state government. So that meaning like Akron, the city of Akron, or any other city, uh, township, whatever that you may live in. Uh, the state decides what services cities and counties are responsible for providing and what kinds of laws cities and counties are allowed to make. Because local governments are the closest to citizens, they are often the ones that can most easily pro uh, provide services. Some services such as schools, libraries, police, water, and trash collection are usually controlled at the local level. Like this morning, uh, Friday morning is always our day in our in my neighborhood, at least, that the trash and recycling get collected. Um, you know, that's something the city of Akron does. Um, so even so, uh, local governments must follow both state and federal laws when providing these services. So again, there's this um, idea, this concept of uh, not overreach, trying to think of the right word for this. Uh, but, you know, it's another example, I guess, of just kind of how our system works. So there's governments at kind of each level. So the city government, then state government, then the federal or national government. Um, you know, so when a city government, like the city of Akron, for example, or maybe it's um, Cleveland, and maybe it's Columbus, Canton, whatever it may be, um, are providing their services, they still need to make sure those um, services and those laws that they are enforcing follow both state government, or both follow state laws and national or federal laws. Um, you know, there's something I keep, I'm trying to hopefully maybe get one day in like in our neighborhood, um, but the city of Fairlawn has their own kind of city wide internet service. Word of the day is cow. Wow. Type this in Google Classroom. Um, yeah, but the city of Fairlawn has their own gigabit uh, internet service, kind of like high speed internet. Um, it's called like Fairlawn Gig, and it's only in the city of Fairlawn, kind of in my neck of the woods in West Akron. We're pretty close to where Fairlawn is, but you know, we're still a few blocks away. And I keep on trying to see if, you know, um, maybe they're going to keep expanding and stuff like that. Um, to my knowledge, the city of Akron does not have its own kind of um, gigabit internet service. You know, there's either t um, Spectrum internet, AT&T, or, you know, other things like that. But, excuse me, but that's just one example that, a, excuse me, a city can provide services to its citizens. Another one, um, you know, my parents live in Maslin, and for a while they were using Maslin Cable TV for their cable and for their internet. Um, Again, that's something the city of Maslin does. There's, it's a service that the city of Maslin provides for its citizens. Uh, again, I, there's no like Akron cable TV or there's anything like that. But, you know, it's really up to each city to decide kind of what services they want to provide or at least offer their citizens. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that was the reading, the two-page reading for this active or for this uh, assignment, assignment seven, the great state. Now, there's a total of three activities. So there's activity A, which is a vocab search. There is activity B, which says that's incorrect. Uh, that one's a little different, kind of tricky at first, but once you kind of get the hang of it, I think it's pretty easy. And then activity C, okay, activity C is called licensed or not. And this really kind of goes back to that second to last section from the reading where it says regulations equal rules. So that's going to be one a section to kind of key in there to ensure or to help kind of maybe give you an idea how to complete C. But what I'll do in our remaining time left here is I'll go over, um, you know, provide a quick overview for each um, activity and help answer a couple of these. That's what I've been doing with the seventh and eighth graders as well. Nor I've been answering like three or so for each. So for those of you maybe that have already completed this packet, that's awesome. I'm glad you guys are kind of working ahead, doing your own thing. Um, you know, this is saying, if you look at the directions for activity A, it says find and circle the word that matches each clue. When you find the word, write it on the blank next to the, next to the clue. Um, I'm not going to require the word search to be completed. If you want to do it, that's great. Okay. I think an easier way to go about this is to refer back to the reading and look for those bold 
vocabulary terms. Look for the key words that are bold. Okay, those are going to be your answers for the, what is it, uh, 15 uh, terms here. There may be one or two. Okay, there may be one or two that um, aren't necessarily bold. So you got to do a little digger, a little bit deeper of a dig to kind of uh, find it. But just about all of them are going to be from the bold words throughout the reading. Okay, so again, you don't have to do the word search if you don't want to. If it helps you, you can. But I would say the easiest way to go about this would be to read the definitions and then go back into the reading and see what definition matches up with the word. So I'll pick three to kind of help do along with you guys. Um, so one that I've been kind of doing with everybody is number one, just to kind of get things rolling here. Again, I'm just focusing on definition right now. I'm not going worrying about you know the word search. So number one, saying parts of the executive branch that carry out laws. Okay, so it's talking about the executive branch. So that kind of gives me a clue as to where I need to look. So, so parts of the executive branch is hard. So I quit doing it. That's fine. Like I said, um, I'm not requiring it. It's fine. <laughs> um, you know, so most times it, it seems like word searches are meant to be this kind of relaxing thing. And for some, sometimes they are for me, other times they're just annoying and aggravating. So that's why I say Kennedy, just focus on trying to solve. And, but you said you got it done already. Um, you know, figure out the definitions first and find the correct term. So again, one is reading parts of the executive branch that carry out laws. Okay, so we know we need to look at the executive branch. So that should be on the first page of the reading. Okay, look for the executive branch. Okay, this is the one just above the little diagram of the courts. And we need to see what part of this executive branch carries out the laws, okay? So the head of the state's executive branch is the state governor, okay? No, nope, the governor is just the head of the executive branch, okay? Our other bold word, let's look at departments, okay? Uh, states have their own departments, education, transportation, health, and other services. These departments carry out the laws passed by the state's legislature. Nice. Okay, so that's going to help us for number one. Number one would be departments. Okay, so I am going to put that in the chat here for those maybe that don't have it yet. Again, this is what I've been doing um, with the other grades. So it'd be nice if Mr. Andrews could spell. So this is activity A, and this is number one, departments. Okay. So that's activity A. Well, there's again, there's a total of 15. I'll try to, you know, do like a couple more here with you guys. So again, number activity A, number one, departments, the parts of the executive branch that carry out laws. If you want to find the word search, you can. Not required, guys. Hmm. Let's look at number five just for just for fun. Just trying to pick some random ones. Number five, a state's judicial branch is made up of these. Okay, if you're not sure if you need a place to start. It's talking about a state's judicial branch is made up of these. Okay, so we know we need to look at a state's judicial branch. Okay, so that's right under executive branch. Okay, so at the state level, like the federal level, cases start in trial court. In many states, the trial court level is called the superior court. Uh, states also have appeals courts. Okay, I'm hearing the word courts a lot. So the, the, the judicial branch is made up of courts. Okay, so number five for activity A, number five would be courts. Sorry, get distracted by something going on outside. So number five, again, the VA would be courts. Again, if you're not sure, just read the definition, then go back into the reading. Maybe it talks about this specific section and look for some of the key vocab terms or the bold words. Um, let's go ahead and look at 15. We'll just do one, five, and 15. Kind of look at some of the beginning, middle, and end here. So 15, a type of local government. Now there's possible like two answers here that will allow. 
Um, so type of local government. Okay, so I'm looking at the section local governments on the very bottom of page two reading. So local governments such as cities and counties get their power from the state government. Okay, so they give examples of a type of local government. So it's looking like cities and counties. Either one or both can be fine there. So let's say in number 15, again, this is still for part A, we can either take cities or counties. Cities or counties. So, you know, if you live in Akron, that you're in living in Summit County. Okay. So there's three easy examples to kind of go through. And really that's the same kind of idea you want to take for the remaining ones. Um, if you want to try the mystery word, okay, that would be a good, nice thing to try if you're a, a bit of a sleuth and can figure that out. So mystery word. So what word is in the puzzle, but not in the clue list? Okay. So that may have to do with one of the things on the sides, okay? Uh, one of the like pictures of diagrams on the sides, and this might have to do with um, kind of uh, one of the earlier things in the reading. It's and the hint I gave in the other ones is that it talks about how forty nine of the states have this style of legislature, okay, the bicameral legislature, but there is one state, Nebraska, they have a different type of legislature. And the mystery word is their style of legislature for Nebraska. So there's your little hint for the mystery word if you're um, going to try to take a stab at that one. Okay, so let's look at uh, activity B here. Activity B. Okay. So activity B is labeled that's incorrect. So right off the bat, again, the statements or the sentences that you're going to read for activity B are incorrect. It's going to ask us to do a specific thing. So make sure we're paying attention here. So there's something wrong with each of the following statements. Again, they're telling us it's wrong from the start. Figure out what it is and cross out the parts of the sentence that make, sorry, cross out the parts of the sentence and make corrections on the line. So we don't need to rewrite the whole sentence or rewrite the whole statement. All we need to do is rewrite the words or phrases that make the statement correct. So let's go ahead and look at number one together. Again, how it is already, how they give it to you, it's incorrect. We need to go back and change it and make it correct. So number one reads like, unlike the federal government, state governments only have one branch of government. Well, after going through the reading and stuff like that in the previous activity, some of the other things we know that state governments don't just have one for, one branch. They have three branches, just like the federal government. So for activity B, activity B, this will be number, number one. We're going to cross off or cross out the word unlike. And instead, we're going to write like. Okay, so that's first part. And the second part of number one, right? So it should read so much so far like like the federal government, state governments. Again, we know that we need to cross off has one government. So number one continued and cross out. Cross out only have oh be nice, Mr. Andrews didn't. Keep messing up. Sorry, guys. The other part we're going to cross off is this. I am putting it there in the chat for you guys. So we cross out unlike, and we're going to write the word like. We're going to also cross out. We have one branch, and instead we're going to write has uh, three branches okay you don't need to rewrite the whole sentence just the words or word to make it correct so the completed sentence or the correct sentence should read like this like the federal government state governments has 
or state governments has three branches of government or three have three branches of government. Okay. So again, remember how it's initially written, it is incorrect. So we need to go back through the reading, maybe double check something um, and cross out what is incorrect and then just write the correct word. So it's kind of like a true false and fill in the blank almost combined into this uh, kind of unique system. All right, um, I'll, we'll look at one more together here, kind of help you with one more. Uh, so let's look at um, number two, okay? Number two for activity B. Again, how it reads like this, states are divided into districts and citizens in each district elect a governor to be head of their district. Okay, so how that is, it's wrong. Okay, states are divided into districts. That's that's right. That's good. So we keep that. And citizens in each district elect. So far, so good. Do citizens elect a governor in each district? No. States elect representatives in each district. Okay. Again, remember the governor is kind of like the president of each state. So again, what we're going to cross out for number two here. Again, this is still activity B. I'm gonna cross out, cross out governor to be head of their district. And cross that part out. And we're gonna write instead we're gonna write who do the citizens in each district elect, they elect a representative. So representative, okay? So they elect a representative, okay? So elect a representative for their district, okay? And this is how number two should look and cross off a governor to be head of their district, and we should write representative for their district. Um, and we don't need to rewrite the whole sentence. Again, take that same kind of approach to three, four, and five. So that way you only have three more to do. Okay. Uh, number five might be the more tricky one or maybe the most difficult, okay. And that's a focus on local governments. And the focus there for number five for activity B is kind of where do local governments get their power? Okay, I'll give it a minute and then we'll take a look at activity C. Okay, so activity C is saying licensed or not. Okay. So when you make a educated guess, you are guessing based on things you already know. It wants us to read the list of professionals below. Okay, with all those little bullet points there. Which jobs do you think most states require a license for? Think about what these people do and make an educated guess about whether they need a state license. Put a check mark next to every job you think requires a license in most states. So all, first thing we need to do for activity C is just read through this list of professions and simply put a check mark of whether you think that person or that job needs a license. So architect, cashier, dentist, interpreter, veterinarian, okay, um, you know, event planner, teacher, nail technician, embalmer, actor. And there's a lot of professions there. First thing you need to do is just go through those and decide what you think might need a check mark and what can be left blank. If you don't think that job needs to be certified or you don't need to have a license for that job, leave it blank. If you think they do need a license, put a check mark. Uh, by my counting, what I got is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 check marks um, on mine, three in each column, if that kind of helps you out a little bit. Uh, and a freebie that I'll throw out for you is that, yeah, a teacher does need to be certified in the state. 
you know, I'm certified and as other teachers are, are certified to teach in the state of Ohio. You know, our license would not work where we would not be certified to teach in other states. We would need to go, you know, do some more schooling or go back to school, take some college courses to be certified, take that test. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, another thing that each state kind of has the power and the ability to do. But again, I have 12 check marks, about three in each state, and throw in a freebie for a teacher there for you. So that's the first part. And the second part for activity C, okay, so now that we've done the check marks and everything, it says now choose three jobs that we checked. Okay, you can put teacher if you want and two other ones, or you can pick any three that you put a check mark and just give a short reason why you think that state probably requires a license. If you put one for, I don't know, an electrician, why would it be important for somebody who wants to be an electrician to be certified, okay? If you put a check mark for a interpreter, okay? Someone who is able to, you know, listen to one language and interpret it into another language. If you think that person needs a license to do that, just give a reason why. Um, yeah, but that's that's really it for C here. Again, put a check mark by which one you think needs a license. Again, I got about 12, um, three in each column. And then out of those 12, Pick three and a quick sentence, you give a reason why you think they need a license, okay? But yeah, that's really gonna kind of wrap it up here for this assignment, number seven, the great state. Again, it's kind of unique to see how, you know, state governments, whether it's the state of Ohio or any other state, maybe you moved from another state, um, even though maybe it didn't feel a whole lot different, states do run a little bit differently. Some states, may offer more services than, you know, compared to other states. So it's really up to each state and then up to each city or up to each municipality, which is really a fancy way of saying like a county or a city, to offer services to its citizens. Um, you know, state governments are set up very much like our federal government at the national level, you know, in Washington, D.C. And that's kind of help with the kind of uh, relationships and the connections that these uh, states and governments have with one another. Um, there's some drawbacks, obviously, but there's also benefits, and I think that's true of any form of government. There is no one perfect form. All forms of government are going to have their um, odd kind of things. They're going to have their quirks. Um, you know, but this this system, the way that our government is, is uh, running, it's done well for over 200 years. So, you know, it's something to think about. Um, you know, this will, a little preview of what's to come for the remaining couple weeks here is really taking a look at um, the role that citizens, you know, that myself, you guys, your parents, the, the role that regular citizens can play and um, the way they can be active citizens and really, you know, take this idea of citizenship seriously, kind of things you should be aware of or things that you can do to make a difference. Uh, so the last few assignments are really gonna focus on citizenship and like the responsibilities and rights of you as a citizen not just in uh, the United States, but in Akron, in Ohio and stuff like that and, and in your local community. So I think these next couple um, assignments should be pretty easy. I think you guys can have some fun with them. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try to post a separate video maybe later this weekend or it'll go up sometime early next week. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thank you for those that stayed on uh, for as long as you could and thank you you guys for showing up. You guys are always a reliable bunch. It's very much appreciated. Uh, I do miss you guys. I know I can speak for all the teachers but when we say, or when I say that, you know, we wish we were back in the building with you guys. Um, I hope you guys are continuing to stay safe. Have a good rest of your weekend. Um, hopefully you guys can get outside a little bit since the weather's supposed to warm up, but it's also supposed to rain a lot. But, you know, unless you guys have any pressing questions or anything of severe importance, uh, I'm going to find my way out of here and I'm going to let you guys go. So stay safe and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.